This video is gonna be a timeless video on playing defense in Madden talking about coverage shells. Now, uh, I get a lot of questions of how do I stop XYZ out of XYZ, right? How do I stop bunch out of dollar? How do I stop uh, trips out of six one? How do I stop um, tight out of three three five odd? How do I how do I stop the run out of three three five cub, right? And what I'm attempting to do in this video is put everything that I know about coverage in one video for you guys so that you can look at how you can stop the best formations in Madden uh, within this one video and then you can cross apply the information that I give you in this video to whatever defense you are running. So we're not going to make this a blitz dependent video and that's why I'm going to be doing this out of dollar or dime 3-2. Now I have a full defensive ebook on dollar that's completely updated. If you guys want to check that out that's going to be linked in the description down below. You can sign up for our school community for just 10 bucks and you can get access to my dollar defense. Dollar is always going to be one of those defenses that is good in Madden. It just always is. I've talked about this a lot, but if you it, dollar is kind of like the fundamental good defense in Madden for a couple reasons. Alignment, the um, pressure is normally pretty good out of this, and then adjustments. Dollar gives you the most amount of bang for your buck in terms of adjustments, especially this year because they've added in some new plays. So as far as audibles go for this little mini mini scheme here, we're going to go cover six Willie. We're going to go edge blitz three. We're going to go with a DB fire, uh, DB fire two. And then we're going to have any kind of match coverage that you want to have. I think this year's game, I think quarters is probably slightly better than palms. Um, but that's just, that's kind of just opinion, honestly. Let's go edge blitz three there, and then let's get the quarters. And then coach adjustments for this is going to be auto flip off, auto alignment on base, option defense on conservative. And there are some formations where we will be using zone drops. Now, in general, um, this is going to kind of, like I said, it's just going to kind of basically be my tutorial on how to stop some of the most popular formations that you're going to see every single year, all right? So we're going to come in, we're going to come out in double safety to go. I didn't meant to flip that at this point in the game. And I will do some cover shells for pressures. I just don't want you to like, if these blitzes get patched or they don't work in another year's game, it's not really going to like, you just use the blitz that works in that game, right? So for example, and I'll just show kind of what I'm talking about. So like one of the best blitzes in the game right now is cover six Willie. So all we need to do is set up a covered shell, something like this. And this is going to be a pretty decent little blitz. He got bumped there, but in general, pretty decent little blitz, right? Now, what I want to show you is this is what I'm talking about, about the cross application of everything that I'm saying in the video. So another really good four man pressure is out of six one. So if I wanted to jump in six one, I could do something like this, uh, which is a really, really good four man pressure here, right? Um, but in general, the way that this would be set up, this would look exactly the same covered shell wise as our cover six Willie did. OK, so in general, you know, that's just kind of a little bit of a explanation about how to cross apply this stuff. Uh, I'll actually do one more cross application and then we'll talk a lot about everything. So if I was to be in like nickel double mug, for example, let's say I come out and you know, whatever play I want to. We'll just use nickel dog three buzz. Well, this is not dollar. This is not six one. This is double mug. And maybe you have a slot corner, which is, which we'll show here. So slot corner on this side. Coverage wise, it's basically going to be the same, right? Because what we're going to be doing here is we're going to go slant RD line inside. We're going to have a hook curl, a soft squat, a deep half, an inside quarter, an outside quarter, and a hard flat. So you see here, this basically for all intents and purposes is pretty much exactly the same as what I just showed you at a dollar. It's the same basic covered shell, okay? So again, you can cross apply this stuff and I think it's very important that you guys kind of understand that because no matter what defense you're running, if you can understand the covered shell behind whatever the pressure is, it's gonna really make a big difference in your defense. So when I say this is a send for a covered shell, that just means we're sending four people at the quarterback, however which way you want to do that. Okay? All right, so 
Now let's go ahead and actually get into some of my favorite coverage shells against Bunch. And Bunch in general is kind of expanding every year. It seems like there's a new Bunch formation. Uh, but in general, the core of a bunch um, is really these three receivers here to the right side. The running back might be to the left side. He might be to the right side. But in general, the main combination that you have to defend, I don't care what year of bunch you're playing, is some variation of this or some variation of this. This is like the core of bunch. It's This is you have to be able to stop this route combination right here and one of the best ways to stop this combination every single year is to utilize a cover two coverage so what i like to do is roll my coverage if you will over the top of the bunch side so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to have an outside quarter here on the left side we're going to have an inside quarter here on the left side we're going to have a hard flat so we don't give up any flat routes we're going to have our user in this kind of yellow zone area, and then we're just going to have a soft squat and a vertical hook. And the reason this is such a good coverage for bunch is because that soft squat, especially this year, can be switch sticked onto. And if you want to, some years you could do a cloud and a half, uh, but some years you know you want to do like a a quarter and a soft squat. But these are some very simple things you could do. And then one other little underrated piece of this cover show is manning up R1. And if you want to, you can even press him if you want to do that. But this is another variation of kind of the same idea. Uh, the vert hook could also be a man up on really anybody on the side. The two most popular would be the slot receiver and the tight end. I really like to man up the slot receiver in most instances. And then... This could either be a soft squat or a cloud flat, depending on the year of the game. Uh, but in general, this would be kind of something that would be really good against kind of that, that idea of a flood concept here. As you see, we're able to defend a lot of what they're doing on the right side. Another popular way uh, to defend bunch every single year is actually kind of an inverse variation of this. And this is typically a send five look so i'm going to use db fire two uh, to kind of illustrate what i'm showing here because we're going to be sending five people at the quarterback and basically what we're going to do is we're going to still roll over the bunch side but essentially the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to have a hard flat from the middle linebacker we're going to have uh, an outside third or outside quarter on this outside you could put an outside half as well uh, these halves are really good for defending one play touchdown attempts um, but typically, you're going to see an outside there because you are sending pressure. You don't really need that half. And then you're going to have a middle third from this left side. So you see this would be something that this would look like. Now, if they, if they, from a user perspective, you're just basically taking the middle of the field. If they run something like verts, this is kind of your area of the field. And then you can switch to going to the middle third and bite down here if you want to do something like that. But those are like the two uh, most popular bunch covered shells that that I know of in the game. And they've really been in the game for a very, very long time. Now, the next covered shell we're going to get into is um, is a cross moon covered shell against bunch. This has been good for a couple of years. Typically, what you want to do if you're going to do this is you're going to send the slot corner off the left side. So we're just going to anticipate that we're going to send the slot corner and basically what we're going to do here is we're still going to have kind of that soft squat type of coverage over there on the left side. But basically then from there, we're going to uh, craft a cross man covered shell. So the way that I like to do this is we're going to man the tight end up with our user. Uh, and then we're going to take the other linebacker, man him up to the outside bunch receiver. And then we're going to try to get a, uh, a press on the slot receiver. So it looks kind of like this. And the reason this is really good, if you wanted to, you could flip flop a couple things about this. Um, you could man up a circle, you know. But the reason that this is such a good coverage show is because it gives you a lot of freedom um, in terms of how you want to defend the backside guy. One of the easiest things I think to do would be to utilize an outside third and then man that safety up to him like that. So now you kind of have everybody on the field cross man with the exception of the running back. 
And then your user responsibility, you can always switch stick onto this inside quarter, out inside quarter him here. Um, you can always switch stick onto this inside quarter pretty quickly within the play uh, to be able to get onto something. Or if you wanted to, you could just put your user in a yellow and you can man up the tight end like this. This is another variation, a way to do this. But essentially what this is going to do a really good job of, it's going to do a really good job at defending the play verticals, as you can see here. It just does a really good job of kind of cross manning the wheel routes, which has been something that you need to do in bunch for a long time. Another popular way uh, or something that's growing in, in popularity with bunch is to turn it into basically a five wide look. Now, when you see the motion that running back out, he is almost always going to be on a streak or a drag. Uh, those are the two main routes that you're going to see. So if we go back to that kind of original uh, coverage that we were looking at. One of the things I like to do is if they are doing something like this, this would be a good opportunity to situationally go with a cover two to the left side and then utilize that middle third here on the right side. The reason that you would want to do something like this is because when they motion that out, the main threat um, is really the C route on the left side, which they can go to. So it looks something like, like this, for example, that we have a, probably a backside post, could be at a double post, but in general, something like this. And so if you look at our covered shell, what is this, what is this able to do? We're able to handle uh, the majority of what they would do, you know, just in terms of their routes. They would have to hit the post route late, um, which isn't a huge deal, or the drag late. So you see here, I would kind of use her this. They'd have to take that drag late. That's just, you know, you're not going to give up a ton of stuff within that within that throw. So that is the next covered shell I wanted to talk about against Bunch. The only other thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of defending Bunch is just the idea of deep halfing this outside player. And this is a, a really nice sim for covered shell that really takes advantage of cover three to the bunch side. So basically what you would do is you would have a flat over here, a hook curl, a, a deep half, and you would shade underneath. So the whole idea behind this covered shell against bunch and why it is really effective is that deep half is never gonna give up a, a one play score. And then if you want to, you can curl flat this outside guy too. But basically what's gonna happen here, uh, just in terms of fundamentally how this is gonna play out, you can switch stick on the corner routes on the hard flat on the right hand side. You have a hook curl in the middle of the field in case they, you know, you could switch stick off of that if they run verticals or something like that. But really, the whole idea and the main purpose for this uh, this coverage is really for this backside post. So if they're going to try to hit you with a backside post, you're going to see here that this deep half, and I'll show that um, you got a little bit of a blitz threat here because you're sitting four. And then if they try to throw that deep post, you're going to see that that deep half is going to play that consistently over the top. So it's just a way of kind of keeping the keeping the top on the roof within this defense. And this is just something situationally that I think is a really, really, really good send for covered show. Now we're going to get into how I defend trips every year um, these are good trip shells literally every single year the first one is actually going to be our first variation of a match coverage so if we jump in here to this i'll show you one of my favorite ways to defend trips and this is something that's a match coverage that you wouldn't probably uh, even realize that is a really good match match coverage look so what you're going to do is you're going to audible to edge blitz three and you're gonna send four, right? There's a lot of good send four shells against trips. And the basic gist of what I wanna do defensively here is I wanna have that seam flat uh, from the slot cornerback, and then I'm gonna put an inside quarter and an outside quarter on that side of the field. And that is gonna match all three trips receivers on that side of the field. The next thing that I like to do is man my user up to the tight end, because if he runs a post route, I'm gonna switch stick off of that. And then on this right-hand side, what I like to do is I like to soft squat. And then if you want to man the running back up, you can. I like to simply leave a vertical hook. This to me is like the most basic good coverage against trips. And what you're going to see is 
if they run verticals, this is going to just do a really good job. Now, if you see that that tight end goes on a vertical streak or corner, you have to go to the running back here. So you're kind of user in here. I see that. Okay. And then I can switch it going to the vert hook. But notice in the replay here how everybody on the trip side is matched really, really, really well. And then you're even getting that soft squat to play that tight end corner. It's one of the most basic cover shells that I like to use against trips literally every single year because it does a really good job against the main things that they want to do, like street corner flat to both sides. If they want to do something like this, this covered shell is going to do a really, really, really good job of taking this away. Let's man this up. So you see here, I'll just switch to the vert hook, and that takes everything away that they could do on that right side. Another reason why I love this combination of uh, adjustments is because let's say that they wanna run kind of the old school trips combos. This is gonna do a really good job because you have the seam flats that are gonna match. So uh, you'll see here, if I wanna run this, you're gonna see that this crosser is gonna get matched by that quarter all the way across the field. And then all you really need to worry about is the backside in route. So the main thing that uh, you're going to need to think about a little bit with trips, uh, once they kind of start to figure out what you're doing and really where are the holes in your coverages, one of the best things you can do against trips is just a stock uh, cover six. So cover six Willie, and literally all we're going to do here is you are just going to out. It's a little bit different because you have to, cover six Willie is a little bit of a bad example. I'll just show it from, I'll show it from uh, cover four palms or just basic cover six. But essentially what you want to do, let me just throw cover four palms in there. You want palms on this. You don't want quarters. You want palms. That's kind of an important distinction. Uh, palms is just going to play a little bit better for this. You basically want quarters against trips, uh, quarters against like double sets and palms against stuff like this. So, what you're going to do is you'd be something like this. Now, in this example, we are technically sending four. Um, if you wanted to send three, be my guest to send three. The only thing I would do if I was going to send three is I would just use it the guy that's on the blitz. Um, that's literally the only thing that I would do. But essentially, what you'll see here is this is just going to cover everything that Trips does really well. And it really does a nice job of taking away corner rounds. One of my favorite things about match coverage is it just makes it really hard for that tight end corner out to ever have a chance to get open. So if they want to try to throw this tight end corner out into this match quarter, like that's that's a really hard throw to com consistently complete year after year, down after down. So that's why I like this. If you wanted to do this out of cover six, Willie, if you just seam flat in the outside quarter, inside quarter, it's going to basically do the same thing. Uh, that this coverage would do, and you'll see here, you know, doubles in sale, you see that quarter is going to match that corner, which is really the biggest thing that you need to have occur. So the match coverage shell is another one of my biggest, most common adjustments against trips. Now, another really simple adjustment that I like against trips is a send for adjustment. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to use a roll coverage technique. So we're going to now roll the coverage. So we're going to have an outside third, uh, inside third, and then we're going to take the safety uh, on the right side here, and we're going to put him on a outside third to the right. So you see, this is the idea of like rolling your coverage. What I'll typically do on this as well is it's actually a better show if we blitz the slot corner and the defense looks more something like this. And now what we're able to do on this backside is we're able to have a coverage that looks like this. This is a very nice coverage shell for trips. This curl flat could be a seam flat. Uh, the reason I would like a seam flat is if they're worried about verticals. But another thing you could do is you could shade that down and have a yellow and a uh, hard flat over there on the left side. This is going to be good for some of the horizontal things that people like to do out of trips where they're going to drag the tight end and maybe have like a flat and a comeback route or something. This is a pretty decent way to defend that. And that's also why I tend to like the curl flat a little bit better. Uh, but as you can see, this is a pretty decent little covered shell against trips. So that's the another one that I like. And then the, the other covered shell that I think a lot of people uh, kind of sleep on 
against trips is kind of like a basic Mabel coverage. And this is where I would set some zone drops. So you're going to put your flats on 25 or 30, your curl flats on 5, and your hook curls are going to be on 5. And the main reason why I like this coverage is because one of the most popular things that people are going to do out of trips is they are going to throw to the left side of the screen. If you think about it, the slant post combo with the tight end post is going to go to the left, the corner rat's going to go to the left, the speed out's going to go to the left. A lot of stuff is going to go to the left or just the trip side of the formation. So what I'll do uh, situationally is we'll get into something like, let's say cover six, we'll go sim four like this. And basically all we're gonna do is now we're gonna craft a roll coverage over the right, but we're gonna Mabel the coverage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna middle third the safety on the left side. If you wanna have a deep half, you can, or an outside third, it's up to you, however you wanna do that. I think the deep half is less susceptible to seam streaks. And then we're just gonna soft squat and we're gonna curl flat. And basically we do have uh, within this defense a little bit of a vulnerability in the middle of the field. But in general, you can kind of user that, make it for that with your user. For example, let's say you get something like this combination here. This would give this a little bit of trouble, but basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this tight end and then you're just gonna kind of bail back to the running back. And you see how this is just gonna do a really good job of defending kind of that left side area of the field. The last adjustment that you will typically see year in and year out against trips is a cross man setup. Uh, this was made popular in Madden 23, and you don't really need to set zone drops for this, so I'm actually gonna go take them off because I did wanna show you one thing uh, that I think is kind of interesting. So again, we're just gonna come out, no zone drops, and we're gonna be in our double safety defense. And for this one, I'm gonna set up your old school like slant post combination. So what you wanna do whenever you're utilizing the cross manning setup is typically you're gonna have a cross man onto the linebacker onto circle, the slot corner onto the slot receiver. And then with these safeties, you can kind of do a couple of little things. It really is honestly up to you in terms of how you want to do it. I'm going to give you two variations. The first one would be just to take this safety and just imagine he's a little bit back here. Uh, would probably be better for the cross main aspect. But you have the cloud flat that kind of shelters that. And then you're going to be able to get this, get this guy to lurk the solo receiver. So it looks something like this here. And then the big thing is I would 100% man the tight end up. Um, I think manning the tight end up is really helpful in this. Uh, you could get to it a couple different ways. One of the ways is you could inside third and man up your user on him so you could switch stick. Either way is fine, uh, but this is just a really nice covered shell for trips. And it, if the tight end goes on a corner route, you don't have to care, and then you can just use her over the middle. But if the tight end goes on a post, you'll see right here, we can just switch stick off of him and take this guy and lurk underneath, and it's going to be pretty decent. Uh, coverage overall. So that's the first method that you can do a cross man. The second method that you could do with cross manning is we could do a outside third, uh, inside third uh, here to the left hand side, and then we could cross man two receivers in the trips formation like this. This is a little safer of a shell, and basically the idea here would be for you to switch stick onto the deep half if you see that that tight end goes on a corner or goes vertical in any way, shape, or form. But as you can see, these crossband setups are really good against trips tight end. The next play that we're going to, or formation that we're going to be taking a look at here is height. And this is a fairly simple uh, one to break down. Uh, defensively, there's really a couple of shells that I think are really valuable. Uh, the first one is going to be just a basic cover four shade underneath and you're gonna send three. So I'm not even gonna really, you know, I'm gonna do it like this typically, uh, but this is like the most basic way to defend tight, but it actually does a really good job. Again, you wanna shade down, really important. Um, you have to shade this underneath, but if you think about what tight does well, it's going to have corner routes on both sides. And so you just wanna be in a position where you can force them 
to have to throw in the middle of the field. And these cover four uh, is going to bracket tight really well on both sides of the formation, uh, which is a great option. Again, we're literally just going to come out. We're going to shade this down. You know, if you want to make it look the same, you could do this. You know, whatever you want to do with your user, don't really care. Uh, but in general, you know, one of the one of the biggest things is user, uh, specifically against tight, is typically user the running back side is going to be a little bit better than user in the other side. And the reason why is because they typically put the running back to the short side of the field. And so that allows us to kind of, okay, we could take this short side corner out. And then the wide side corner out is going to get bagged typically by that outside corner. So that's one of the most like basic ways to defend tight. If you think about tight, all we want to do is we just want to try to constrain the space of the field that tight can actually hurt us on, which typically is going to be the uh, typically going to be the corner routes almost always so the next cover shell is a double mabel cover shell so flats on 30 or 25 curl flats on five and hook curls on three and for this what i like to do is actually do it out of a cover four because we don't really need these deep halves we want these quarters because these quarters uh, will help defend seam streaks so however you want to do it, I would almost always blitz my user. And the reason why is because I don't really need to switch stick much out of this shell. But basically, we're just going to soft squat the outside guys. We have that hook curl on the left side, uh, which is going to... You always want your hook curls to the wide side of the field so that they can play more space on the field. You don't want your hook curls to the short side, typically. And this is just going to do a good job, again, against that streak corner combo uh, that people like to do and then if there's anything over the middle and the back side we can typically take that away but as you see both corner routes get bagged really nicely by this double mabel type of covered shell that i think is really 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 important to have uh, when we talk about defending any kind of like compression two by two set and this does again this 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 is going to apply to more than just tight open but it is just something that uh, I did want to mention. Another thing you could do with this uh, that I've always loved against tight, and just, just to illustrate this isn't just tight open, we can get into a formation like tight Y off, for example, and it's literally going to be almost identical, right? You got two by two compression on both sides. It's very similar formation layout. So this next thing that I like to do is something that I think is pretty interesting against tight, but again, now what we're going to do is we're just going to maybe one side of the field and we're going to cover for the other. So what I'll, I'll do is I'll cover for the wide side and I'll maybe the short side. If, another way you could do it is you could roll the coverage. So it could look something like this. This is also fine. This is going to be a little bit more susceptible to a seam streak on the right side, but you're going to get a little bit better outside coverage. Um, but in general, you know, this is something that also that you can do and it's going to give tight a lot of issues, um, a lot of a lot of issues. So I really like the combination of either a Mabel coverage or a shaded down cover four. And then I'm going to also give you for tight a send five look, uh, a send five pressure. So as well, I might even give you a send four too. So if you want to send five against tight, typically what you have to understand is you want to send, you want to send five very similarly to the way you want to send five against bunch. So like, let's say we just want to use DB fire to show this. So this is a send five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soft, I'm going to soft squat or cloud the short side. So it basically would be like a deep quarter on the left, a middle third on the right, and then a deep half on the, or a middle third on the left, and then a deep half on the right. So it's like, like this. And then we're just going to hard flat this linebacker. The reason this is going to be a good coverage shell is because we help defend the sidelines on both sides. We funnel everything back in the middle to our user, and we're able to send five off the shell, which is going to speed up the rate at which the routes are going to be open. Now, if I wanted to send four, um, a nice send four coverage shell against this would be really something very simple. And the biggest thing with this is you would just flat this guy on the left side, I'm typically going to do something like this right here. This is to me, whoops, the third there, um, either a cover two with a vert hook. That's that's a, a variation. I really like having uh, deep halves and inside quarters. I think because, again, this just helps take away the seams, uh, which I think is really hard to cover in this game. So something like this is pretty decent. 
right? Because you have a lot of coverage here to the right side. You're able to kind of be more over here to the left side with your defense. Um, another thing that you could do, though, is you could do something like this, or you could do something like this. This is perfectly fine. The one thing I would say is like a coverage shell like this, the reason that this is not ideal is because they can hit you in the seam on the left side. So what you would probably you know want is you would want a quarter here, right? And then you would want to have either a quarter here or um, you know this would be something that I would actually run it would be something like this. Uh, and again, the reason why either a half or a quarter. If you're going to do a half, you need to do a middle third. Um, but this right here is pretty pretty nice shell for defending tight. As you can see, I'm just going to be a little bit more in the middle of the field. So the next. Formation that I get asked a ton about how to defend in Madden literally every year is some form of five wide. There'll be a lot of different variations, but basically, how do you stop five wide? I'm going to give you a very simple answer. I think the easiest way to stop five wide consistently is through sending good pressure so they have to actually block somebody and then basically taking away the seams. Uh, if you take away the seams, Five wide is going to struggle. So a very simple shell to me would be a send four shell like this. And all we're going to do is we're going to hard flat the slot corner inside quarter this guy. And then if you want to have a, a full on cover four shade underneath, this is my like, I think this is decent five wide defense, just a basic cover four uh, because you're going to get good pressure. You're able to kind of work the middle. And then again, the biggest thing we can do against five wide and really the most important thing we can do against five wide is defend the seam streaks. If you can defend the seam streaks, you can play defense against five wide. Um, another one that I think is really actually pretty decent is a just a match coverage look like this, like a basic palms. And the reason why I like this is because if you only send three here, this is going to do okay against five wide, especially if they're running like verticals and stuff. You're going to you're just going to do a really good job against the seams. That's the main reason why I like it. And then kind of a hybrid or a mix of this would be to do something like this off of a send four, where we have kind of this cover three match where we're going to use kind of those same principles from trips. Because again, five wide is typically trips to one side and doubles to the other side. So what we'll do here is we're going to go with a inside quarter, outside quarter on that right side. We have that seam flat. And then what I like to do here on the left-hand side is a deep half, a soft squat, and a vert hook. Something like this I think is really good against five wide because you you make it hard for them to hit the corners on both sides. And then again, you're, you're able to defend the seams. Notice how a lot of my defensive strategy is going to be built around how do we stop the seams um, because the seams are something that you need to be able to stop no matter what the year the game is. Um, and then another show that I like against five wide is kind of just your basic show. Again, you just have to worry so much about the seams on both sides. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just man up the seam. So as you see here on the left side, the slot corner is going to be manned up. And then on the right side, I'm a really big believer in kind of like just a cover three. And if we ever wanted to sit situationally do a coverage like this, I'd probably want to have an outside third here. But this vertical hook will do a really good job against that slot. And then basically my job is going to be to defend this third receiver, this number three. I think this is a decent shell for trips as kind of a mix-up, man-up look. It's going to kind of help take away some of the things that have been left open. And then you're going to have stuff like this. Another really underrated, I think, defense against five wide is really an all-out kind of cover two sink type of look. And what I mean by cover two sink is you need to have a middle third. So as you see here, we're going to use outside thirds. And the reason why this is a really good coverage shell for tight or for um, for five wide is because these soft squats, you could cloud flat them on the outside as well. They're just going to do a good job of taking away like comeback routes, things like that, and just kind of keep everything underneath. They have to throw underneath. The vert hooks match the seam streaks perfectly. And then as you see, they just have to basically, you know, throw the ball underneath of the defense. So that's another thing that I would do if I was defending five wide. Uh, but but really, I would just try to send four, send five. Uh, you could every single year. I see people do this, and it is effective. Where you just say, okay, we're gonna play man to man, and you could even press it. So we're gonna just press man. You know, as many. Um, basically, we're gonna press as many people as we can. So. 
we're going to press man these two slots like so, which is going to take them out of the game. And then you can have like a cover three and that you run into a cover two like this. I think this is probably the best way to do it. Um, but the only thing with the cover two on the right is sometimes it can get manipulated and bombed. So what I would probably do is roll it like this and play cover two to the short side. But this in general is a fairly good shell uh, for this because you can switch stick out of this and be in a pretty good position to defend a lot of what five wide has to offer. I, I can just switch stick here and you see that we can take away a lot of the throwing lanes that they have. Last thing I want to go over is any kind of under center set like stretch, any kind of that stuff that you'll see eye close. Um, this I'm going to try to keep as simple as possible because you don't see this a ton. And when you do, it's pretty predictable what you're going to get. So there's really two things that you can do. Number one, you can go all out run defense. But I think the easiest thing to do is just come out in a cover two and literally just play cloud flats on the outside. So we're just going to shade underneath. We're going to play cloud flats now, turn these guys into cloud flats. And then if you want to pinch and contain, and you're just going to use the vert hook that's on the weak side. And this to me is the best way to stop under center because you're going to stop the run really well. Um, you, you basically almost always, when you're playing an under center set, you want to have some type of way to basically take away the outside run. If you can take away the outside run, then you can almost always take away the inside run, right? So again, something like this to me is, is really good against under center sets because if they do pass the ball, when they pass out of under center sets, you're almost always going to see corner routes, like always, always, always see corner routes. So you do something like this, and now the corner routes are going to be taken away on both sides. You're going to get those seam streaks taken away. To me, this is a, just a very good way uh, to defend under center. Another simple way to defend under center, again, most under center formations are going to look, unless it's like a, a pro set like this, they're going to be basic variations of the shotgun formations themselves. But the biggest thing I want to show you here is if it's an under center formation, what you need to see is like this, where, where can they actually pass this ball? Like based on who's on the field, how are they actually able to consistently pass the ball? So this is where we can do things again, like, what I was saying with, you know, really on the left side, there's not a lot they can do. So we could do a coverage like this. And this is a fairly, you know, favorable position uh, to be in because we take away the corner to the right side. We take away, we take away the, um, we, we take away the, the, um, the streak over the middle. Like we just take away everything that they have to offer. And then, oh, they run the ball. Okay, well, we're still in pretty good position to handle that. And this cross applies out of dollar. You don't have to just do this out of dollar. Um, you know, one of the best run defenses every single year is some form of 6-1 where we just got to blitz these outside linebackers, right? And then basically what we're going to be able to do from this is we can just craft a coverage. So we're going to blitz the strong side linebacker. We're not going to blitz the weak side linebacker. And it would basically look something like this. This is almost identical to what I just showed you at a dollar. It's just out of 6-1. And now, you know, maybe you have a little bit better user area, but in general, the coverage is pretty much the same. And you're going to get the same results where you're taking away the corner routes, you're taking away the big play stuff, and you're forcing the offense to have to throw in the hardest area of the field, which is my whole defensive philosophy. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope that this video kind of helped give you a little bit of a guide that you can cross apply as you go through your Madden career. Um, this A lot of this stuff works in college football too. And if you want to deep dive any of the defenses I showed you in the video, make sure that you join our school community. That's where you'll get access to all of my offensive and defensive eBooks. For just 10 bucks, you're going to get access to college football and Madden 25, everything you need to know to get better at both games. You can sign up for that at the link in the description down below.